So welcome to the Dallas Film Podcast. Really excited today to have a Dallas staple in the uh, in the industry here, the Pegasus Media Project. It sounds so like cool and exciting, like Pegasus Media Project, what is that? But I'm just going to throw it to the Pegasus Media Project and let them introduce themselves and tell you who they are and what they do. Well, my name is Ryan Blitzer. Uh, I'm the managing director of Pegasus Media Project. And Pegasus's goal is to teach filmmaking to underrepresented populations. And so we work together with um, a bunch of industry partners and community partners to put together programs that are both educationally driven as well as artistically driven. And so we have an apprenticeship program that is recognized by the Department of Labor. Um, we have a high school program where we go and teach filmmaking to high school students that don't have high school, you know, high school film programs. Uh, and then we also have a huge high school film festival that's entirely run and um, put on by students in high school and for high school students. So uh, as far as I know, it's the largest high school film festival in the country. So mm -hmm. we kind of try and bring together a lot of different aspects of education and artistry to help people find their voice and trying to get, you know, really, really strong artists moving into the industry and having the community embrace that. That's awesome. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Made it so easy for me. Um, um, my name is Nilu Jalivant. I am the director of the Pegasus Media Project. Um, all of this started when I was a mathematics teacher <laughs> about 20 years ago at Booker T. Washington High School for Performing and Visual Arts. I was there for 21 years. Um, but when I first had started... Um, I'm also a painter and a visual artist. Uh, I met Michael Caine, um, and he was doing the Deep Ellum Film Festival, and he knew that I had a film club at the school. Um, Michael Caine as in the actor Michael Caine? No. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, Michael Caine was at the Deep Ellum Film Festival? Really? <laughs> no, Michael Caine... Um, He's just a, a community connector. He is, uh, uh, he's, I think he started the, uh, wait, he did AFI. He did the um, Deep Ellum Film Festival and then AFI here in Dallas right. and then Dallas International and then um, EarthX, I think. But anyway, sorry, Michael, um, if I missed that up. But um, anyway, um, he was like, hey, we need a student block. Do you want to bring your film club kids and, and do that? And I was like, yeah. And he goes, and also, um, we have the tunnel in Deep Bellum that needs um, murals. So do you guys want to come do that? And I said, well, let me ask the kids. I told the kids, and they were like, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> so I did that along with other faculty. Um, we spent like three days painting murals and um, actually, one of the films that played at the festival was about the um, the making of the murals. Um, anyway, that was the inception okay. of uh, of uh, where where we where we're at today. Um, but what I noticed uh, being at such an amazing um, and really elite high school because we have so many graduates that do really well. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to audition to get in. And uh, many times, uh, you know, there's lots of people in Dallas ISD that don't get in. Um, but a lot of those kids randomly email you. You know, they're like, I didn't get in, but um, sorry to disturb you, but, you know. And I was like, wow, these are kids that have passion and they're not going to the schools. Mm -hmm. What are we going to do about it? And in 2015, I started uh, reaching out to other high schools and asking, um, do you all have students that are interested uh, in filmmaking? And they said, oh, yeah, but we don't have the program here. I said, well, what if um, I'll come and give a workshop to you guys? And they were like, really? OK, yeah, come on. <laughs> so uh, that's how it started, um, bringing people together and making, you know, um, uh, what resources I had and sharing my knowledge and my resources and my networks with um, those communities that didn't have that, like the way that um, we did at Booker T. Sure. And it's really interesting because you, you know, it starts from this kernel of an idea, right? Yeah. And then it goes to 
hey, how can I help these other schools and other students around the area? And then now it's a you're a 501c3 nonprofit organization, Correct. right? And so now you're in the process of, you know, you raise money and you write grants and you mm-hmm. get sponsors and Dallas Film Commission is a sponsor as well. Yes. Um, and you do all these different things, and then you take those resources. And so, like, what exactly do you do with those resources? How are you, you know, putting out these workshops for students and kids? And then you also have like a an adult apprenticeship program as well. That's not just for students. So that's a, that's yeah. a, that's several questions there, I guess. But we'll yeah. start, you know, just start <laughs> yeah. with one of those and kind of build on that. Right. Um, the adult program started when many of my students that had graduated. Or the students that I was affiliated with, like um, not necessarily at Booker T, but a lot of them from Booker T, from around Dallas area, um, were going on um, to work and um, and some going to college and different institutions for film and media. And they would come back and say, oh, you know, Miss J, that's my nickname. Um, can you find us, you know, something? And so... I had so many wonderful friends um, that I met uh, through the festival, um, you know, festivals here in Dallas mm-hmm. and uh, just becoming friends. And I would call them up and I say, hey, um, um, you know, I have a student that's doing this and this. Can you bring them on? And now they've passed high school. Yeah. Um, and so uh, a lot of them, a lot of the companies were like, well, but do they have PA experience? Do they know? how to do this or that. And, and that's was the inception of map program. Right. Um, which is the multi- map map. M A P. Yes. Okay. M A P. Um, multimedia pre apprenticeship and apprenticeship program, okay. which Ryan leads. So I think the biggest thing about map in particular is that when we say adult, it really means the range of folks. And so we have people that have been through college, some that haven't, some that are veterans, some that aren't. And the age range of those individuals is 21 to 45. Yeah. And so it's giving What folk... if you're 46? If you're 46, sure. Okay. All right. <laughs> I don't, no we, don't wanna, we don't want to exclude the 46-year-old. <laughs> no, no, so. Especially because we are, I don't know, I think that what we're able to kind of bring into like the apprentices that we're able to bring into the program, they come from such diverse backgrounds. Mm-hmm. And ultimately it's them kind of discovering who they are as artists along with the professional mm-hmm. training that we're giving them. And mm-hmm. that comes in the form of, you know, we're bringing in lots and lots of industry professionals yeah. to talk to them. Um, they went to MPS on a day and had sure. a whole and PA for, for those who are listening, explain what MPS is. MPS is one of the biggest studios in Dallas. Um, it they're off Regal Road. It's actually not too far from here. Um, <laughs> but they have a couple of studio spaces that we use in the commercial. And they supply area. Grip and Electric, it's Genie and, camera, yeah, camera, studio space, and you know, I hate, I'm a freelance producer and production manager in the commercial space, so I, I'm there literally all the time. Yeah. And uh, they are they were awesome and said, hey, you know, what can we do to help you? And it turned into this PA boot camp that, you know, we had we brought in some producers, we brought in some G and E folks. So it became like PA boot camp and lighting workshop. I mean, it was a very extensive yeah. set of tools that, you know, the apprentices were able to talk with industry professionals, gaffers and key grips. Yeah, and actually be able to touch a C stand and set things up and learn the skills that you just normally don't have film school doesn't necessarily teach you those things when you go through film school they don't teach you the technical physical aspects of it they teach you you know the theory and what to do with the camera and you know everybody wants to be a director a writer a producer when they come out of film school and we're trying to get them to go figure out exactly what they want yeah and in order to do that i have to we have to expose them to so many different opportunities you don't know if you want to go into craft services unless mm-hmm. you've talked to a craft services person. Mm-hmm. And certainly film school, you're not always going to get to talk to a craft services person or even know that it exists. And so being able to expose just all of the different opportunities that might be available, even to those who have been through film school, because we have a couple in the program that have been through film school, but they're learning so much here that they didn't learn there that it's like it's causing them to think about what they want to do with their careers. And that's the really rewarding part because ultimately yeah. at the end of this, there's like a pre-apprenticeship phase where they go through the training 
And then there's the apprenticeship phase, and we're going to get them on set if they want to mm-hmm. go into production. We're going to get them in a post house if they want to go into post. We're just trying to get them to go do the thing that they want to do. And in order to do that, we just have to be able to expose them to all the different things, and they practice with the things they want to do. Yeah, and it's really it's really great because it is needed in an area. You know, mm-hmm. Dallas is a, a big commercial market, right? So there's Huge. so much commercial stuff here. That's how that's how everybody really makes a living mm-hmm. when it comes to the industry here. And then, you know, now with the State Film Incentive and over the years when productions have come to town, especially, you know, you've got The Chosen that's shooting yep. and they're going to start on their fifth season. You've got Taylor Sheridan shooting yep. multiple shows. And now, you know, we're trying to bring other productions here, whether it's film or television. Well, you know, there's the three things that they always that they always look for any production mm-hmm. coming to town. What are the incentives? What's the crew? And what's the soundstage space? Mm-hmm. And so, okay, yes, incentives. But if all the crew is gone on two other projects, then you can't bring anybody to town. So it it really is a vital component of building a community and you know building a, a the business in a in an area. And I think because of the size of Dallas. Everybody knows everybody, mm-hmm. and it's really important to know Which is that. a weird thing to say because it's so big it's at the huge, same time. It's yeah. huge, but everybody knows everybody, <laughs> and that allows, like, I know the folks that are working on the Taylor Sheridan shows. I know the folks that are working on The Chosen, and it's like, how do we connect our apprentices with those folks mm-hmm. so they can go PA on those big things and then go into the department they want to? Like, it becomes, and obviously I have the connections in the commercial world too, so it becomes... Hey, let's just get them to the place they want to go to. <laughs> yeah. And it allows them to be successful in the way that they can be mm-hmm. best successful. Well, and a lot of times they don't know what they want to do. Like That's exactly I, right. I didn't know I would enjoy the art department, you know, this yeah. much, or wardrobe or props. Like yes. all the things that, you know, again, film school is not gonna say, here's how to be there are actually I shouldn't say there are some film schools who will train you to be an art director. You know, you can go through sort of that art director training. You don't start as an art director, of course, but but you know that that's something that you mm-hmm. want to do. So it's it's really is a vital, you know, thing to have in the area. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, in 2021 uh, is when we became the 501c3. Mm-hmm. Um, at that time, um, Christian Vasquez and myself started uh, the, um, the process, and we were lucky to get a um, large grant um, from the MIT Solve program that was happening at the time. It was a government incentive to stimulate the economy. Mm-hmm. Um, so we got really lucky. It was right after the pandemic. Yeah. And um, Alliance of Arts and Media, which is a national, wonderful organization, and the Work for Solutions of Dallas, the three of us were partnered uh, with for this grant. And um, so we were able to purchase um, a lot of equipment and um, also, you know, launch the program. And that first year we had um, 10 individuals, but we had so many applicants that we ended up getting four additional, even though we did not plan to. Um, And then last year we had 10. Uh, We just didn't have the budget or the faculty to oversee and make Mm -hmm. it happen and then this year uh, we have 12 and we're so excited to see what's going to happen um in 2021 by the way um uh, one of our apprentices uh zinia matthews Mm -hmm. um with christian vasquez produced a wonderful film um eureka and um that went to Sundance. And so we had an opportunity to go to Sundance. I had never been. It was really fun. And just to see Zinnia in that space was, um, you know, for me, just, I, I I just couldn't put my video camera down. Sure. Yeah. I was just recording everything and just loving her and, and, um, Christian and the whole team. Yeah, no, it's great because obviously people know Sundance as being super competitive. Mm-hmm. You know, was it? It was a short film that they did. It was a short film. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, they'll get you know, ten thousand short films and take less than one percent of those. That's that, so. Yeah. To be able to you know do that is uh, is really great, and they yeah. came out of your program, so that's amazing. Yeah, and um, they used clips of the film in their introduction. Oh, cool. So that was really fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, I think that's the great thing about what we do is 
we try and get these people to blossom and then just watch them grow. Right. Yeah. And that's, I mean, it's just so incredible to watch. And, yeah. you know, it, it's, I don't know, it's like we're trying to imbue good into the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get get all these folks who maybe didn't have a voice before and yeah. get them out there. And now they're going to Sundance. Yeah. Well, and like you said, you're limited to, you know, 10 because of budget, essentially. Right. You know, if in a dream scenario, dream world, you know, how many students could you do if you had the funding behind it to, to make it happen? Um, as many as they wanted, <laughs> that yeah. wanted to join. Sure. Um, we had about 80 applicants this year. Last year, I think we had uh, 100 applicants. Um so, yeah, as many people that want to, if we had the um, finances sure. for it, because... Yeah, you had to have the space and the the, the, the equipment and the instructors right. and the time. And, exactly. Yeah. And right now, we are putting in a lot of time and not getting compensated. <laughs> yes, I understand that. <laughs> We're, in we yeah. We're in the growth phase. We're in the growth phase, but we believe in the project. Yeah. We know that I imagine... Um, Pegasus to become the like AFS mm -hmm. um, to have its own facilities, um, work with the city, work with the economic development yeah. um, and tourism, and um, you know encourage people to um, move to the city because we have a program such as that. Um, there are programs similar to ours, um, obviously in Austin AFS. Mm -hmm. Um, Austin Film Society. Austin yeah. Film Society. And then uh, in New York and in the Bay Area um, and in Atlanta. Uh, but there's nothing like what we're doing. Yeah, no, it's interesting. Yeah, you you do start to see Georgia developed a program like this years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, Louisiana had a program uh, as well or still does where they do. Because mm -hmm. you get to a point where these incentives come along, people want to shoot. And then there's not enough crew. And so how do you ramp that up quickly? And so I think that if we can maintain the incentive in the state of Texas, then mm -hmm. this will follow, right? Then you have mm -hmm. to have that workforce there. And so mm -hmm. if the state of Texas for your incentives, if you want 55% of everyone working on mm -hmm. set to be Texas-based crew, well, you need to train mm -hmm. the people that get those jobs. And so I think mm -hmm. there's a there's a progression there. Mm -hmm. If you can hang on, mm -hmm. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, then, then they'll come along. Well, and I think, in the recent development since COVID, right, there's more shows coming to Texas to film. And as a result, the existing crew base is now being spread across many different things. And it's we can help replenish that <laughs> crew support because yeah. truly if two or three shows are going on at the same time, between that and the commercials that yep. are going on and the reality that's going on here, we we run out of crew. <laughs> Yeah, no, so you have, you know, you're probably, we're probably three crews deep in, yeah. in Dallas. For three like, to four sounds right. For major productions. And mm -hmm. then then there's just enough left to do commercials. Yep. Reality TV is a staple that shoots in this area mm -hmm. as well. And then what? Well, hopefully now all those Texans that moved to Oklahoma to work up there are coming back, you know, to work on projects. And things are slow industry-wise right now. It's still post-strike has not taken off yeah, yet it's not totally recovered but it will at some point i you know all the studios and everybody with the money are they're just waiting because they've burned so much at creating their you know streaming platforms that they're like let's just let people watch all the stuff we've made and then once we start running out of things people have watched then we'll start making more so i think as we get into later this year we'll start to see things start picking up again and i hope too that you know they're talking you know ayatsi's talking about striking on this tv Summer, side yeah. you know Hopefully that I mean I think the commercial contract's still good through the end yeah. of the year. So hopefully we're able to kind of get Yeah, some that's other that's another in. interesting thing. Like what is Ayatsi gonna do this summer? Everybody's like, We just had like a nine month long strike. Please don't do another one. And it, so have you heard that they would strike on the T V side, but not necessarily the feature film side? Don't quote me on this, okay. but I, I, from what I understand, because Ayatsi has so many different contracts, yeah. the commercial contract I'm pretty sure is good through at least yeah, through I the think, end of I the year. I think commercial everything is good. I, but I, well, I was just reading this morning, I think it's either TV or film that's starting to to have murmurs about right. wanting to strike. Yeah, because um, mm -hmm. really what they're striking mm -hmm. against, same thing, writers, directors, it's not, you know, the little independent film the $5 million film that wants to shoot somewhere. It's the 
all the studios and Netflix and, mm -hmm. you know, HBO Max and all the platforms, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, it's an interesting world we live in as far as that all that goes now. Well, and trying to, you know, relay to the people that we're trying to promote and bring up right. into the industry. Yeah. Like, this is how the industry kind of, you got, <laughs> you have to be very fluid and very flexible yeah. and it's understand. Like, are you sure you want to work in this are industry? You sure. It's a terrible industry. I don't know why we do it, but, you know. And, but then there's like, you know, roles like within the city and then there's roles elsewhere and post houses like there's yeah. ways to avoid some of those problems Absolutely. especially if your interests lie in well and that's the places. commercial industry too that's yeah. where that's where the, the business lies that's exactly right yeah. so obviously you know we're talking about the the map program and this apprenticeship training program mm -hmm. for adults but you have a huge high school component to oh what, to what yeah you do. that's so let that and that's your passion that's right? my passion yeah, yeah. so let's that's... talk a little bit more about that explain so there's the high school Film Festival. The High School Film Festival is and Pegasus Film Festival. Pegasus Film Festival. So talk about that. This year it's led by 16 high school students. One is actually um, younger, is in uh, middle school. And um, and they take on roles um, that are normally in any uh, adult uh, film festival. And they have departments. They have art department fundraising department, et cetera. And this year's, um, I want to mention the director, is Isla um, McKenna, and um, who's leading and her team. And we have Anu and Anika that are the co-producers. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's, again, watching them is very satisfying um, for everyone, uh, not just myself. But the other thing that we do is we go into high schools that don't have these types of programs yeah. and um, we find the individuals that want to do it. Um, it's not a forced type of curriculum. Sure. Is this an after hours kind of thing? Like no, an after it's school during thing? school. Uh, during school. During school, we find um, teachers mm -hmm. that are interested in working with us and they have students that are interested in it. And uh, we have a program right now at Townview. Um, we're teaching film to um, a group of students that are a part of the theater department Interesting. there. So does, does this work so that, just so I fully understand, mm -hmm. so, for example, um, there's a lot of schools in the Dallas Independent School District. That's mm -hmm. what the ISD stands for, right? Yes, in, in, Independent School Independent District. Independent School District, yeah. okay. And... <clears throat> If there's a if there's a school that doesn't have a program, you would coordinate with them and say, "Hey, for this semester, we're going to do a class for whatever students are interested." And you'll kind of rotate between schools in the Dallas ISD and like at a semester at a time, sort of thing. Is that how that works? Yes, it depends on our budget. Okay, um, we could do three uh, schools this past year. Gotcha. And uh, we were at Spruce High School. And at Townview High School mm -hmm. and at uh, Vickery, Meadow. Vickery Meadow. Okay. Thank you. And let's say you, if you had a student at, at a different school that didn't attend those, are they able to come to the program of that school if they have a way to do it, you know? Or does it just have yeah. to be, you've got to be in that you school? You have to be in that school for those. But yeah. we provide um, workshops where we invite the community to come. Okay. And right now we're based in um, the public library in downtown. Mm -hmm. We're on the sixth floor. We're there most Saturdays, um, but we're about to go into production. So oh, yeah. um, we're not going to be there probably. <laughs> we'll gather there to do pre-production stuff. But Sure. Um, so you have like a certain number of Saturdays per year where you do free workshops for high school kids no matter what school they go to because if they – if you because – you know, obviously there's a lot of schools and you can't hit every single one. There's some right. some kids at some school that are just getting left out that aren't going to be able to do it. And so you've got the free workshops then. Right. Yeah. If people know about what we're doing mm -hmm. and are willing to, you know, support us, um, yeah, we can expand that. Of course. <laughs> we can expand that. Yeah. There is a um, ton of talented people that are willing to give back like Ryan. Yeah. We just hit the jackpot with Ryan. It was like, <laughs> what? You really want to help us? It's like, yeah, and I got a bunch of friends that want to help you too. I was like, wow, please bring it on. And so um, I would love to be able to compensate all of these wonderful mm -hmm. givers, you know. Um, and in today's world, man, it's all about the connection. It's oh, no, of course. human-human connection. Yeah. And, well, and, you know, there's a, you know, especially... 
anything business wise, but film world, you know, people are always out there say looking for film investors and things mm -hmm. like that. But what people don't realize is someone doesn't invest in your film because they like your film. They're investing in you mm -hmm. and what they believe you can do. And so, so, so much of it is about connections and networking. And it's sad to say, if you've got a bad personality and you're, or you're a mean or bad person or something like that, people are not going to support you. Doesn't I mean, matter we, how talented you are. <laughs> we I've see seen it all that. the time, yeah. right? Like in the, you know, in the freelancing world, it's like you want people to succeed. You want people to be part of your team. Yeah. And we, are making a conscious effort to avoid the people that don't. Of course. <laughs> and and I think that goes to kind of how we support all of our students, whether they're in high school or whether they're mm -hmm. the adults, mm -hmm. is we are trying to help them both in the art artistry side, but yeah. also in the holistic self-care side. Yeah. Because there's a lot <laughs> there's a lot of folks in the industry that just mm -hmm. really beat themselves into the ground for their craft. Sure. And I think us being able to bring light to some of those things that are self-care oriented and really focusing on you as an artist, but you as a human right, helps to advance some of those other things that we've been talking about. And ultimately, if we can get to the place where we're bringing in great people into the industry yeah. that are also self, you know, supported on the back end, mm -hmm. then we can create really what we're envisioning in the community, which is, you know, a more accepting place to work and a more accepting place for people to grow and learn. Yeah, because it's not just about the technical skills that you learn, but it's the people, human skills of you have to, you know, it's a very collaborative, oh, yeah. you know, art form. It's a collaborative business. You know, it's mm -hmm. the right show business, not show art. So it's very collaborative. So you have to be able to work with other people. So they're not just learning the skills of how to point a camera, set up a C-stand, you know, run sound, whatever it might be, but how do you work with other people mm -hmm. and how do you get along with other people? And mm -hmm. our projects are oriented that way too. Yeah. It's like you find out very quickly you can't do the thing you want to do alone. Right. And so <laughs> we're going to put you into groups so you can figure out, oh, I really do need these people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's great because that allows growth, you know, from small to larger sets where they get oriented with what it is that they're doing and then they can go make a film together and really put into practice what we've been <laughs> yeah. teaching them. Now, and speaking of making a film together, you said you're going into production. What are you going into production on? So the production is after the uh, pre-apprenticeship program that uh, Ryan is leading, they go into making films. They're going to pitch. Um, and actually, this weekend... And it's happening Saturday. Yeah, oh, with nice. um, Nori Nivens mm -hmm. is one of our board yeah. members. And his studio is supporting us that we're our students are going to pitch for him um, and for us. And we're going to make a decision as to which of the films that they pitch we're going to make. Our goal is to do three if they're excellent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's great. Three is three is good between 10 people and then each 12. Or 12 people. Yeah. And then you can and you split up roles and then we do different roles on each film. Correct. So yes. the scripts yeah. that are selected, those students, those apprentices will be yeah. the directors of their script sure. that they wrote. And then we have, you know, last class, you know, I wrote on the dry race board, like, what departments are you interested in? Yeah. And they just like, kind of all signed up. And, you know, what was, the, what was the department with the least number of? Oh, easily vanities, wardrobe, wardrobe, hair, makeup. Yeah. And but I mean, that was four of the 12 signed up for that. So we have enough okay. to, you know, yeah. do the three That's films. Good. So it's great. Um, yeah. But I think they're really kind of discovering because some people have stated like, "Hey, I want to go into camera, but I don't know if I really want to be a DP. I'd rather right. AC, AC." You know, and yeah. So I think mm -hmm. as long as they're all kind of doing roles that they're mm -hmm. interested in and get mm -hmm. to try it out, mm -hmm. it's like, "Oh my god, I really love sound." Like mm -hmm. everybody always forgets sound. Let's yes. make sure we Especially really focus on it. Especially on indie films or short yeah. films, like sound is That's always so just it's the hardest. It is. It is. <laughs> but now you know at least technology has improved now where. The little road clip on mics, yes. like those are magical. Um, you know, for, for, use those. <laughs> for interviews, they're great. And then MZ Studios, where we record this podcast, when they come out and record our workshops, you know, that's what we're clipped on with are those. And it's great because, you know, we're doing workshop in a, in a big room with 150 people and the sound comes out sounding really clean and they do a nice job putting that, putting that all together. So then, you know, translate that to a short film or a film set, you're making it so much easier for them to be able to get better sound for their productions and what's great is that we have you know part of what that initial grant several years ago allowed us to do was 
purchase a lot of equipment, so the oh, students good. have free access to equipment to practice and to That's learn great. on, including those road mics. Yeah, and you know we're looking at we we partner with people like MPS who mm -hmm. you know allow the rental of <laughs> gear at yeah. either low or no cost. So they can also learn that way, too. And they're going to have to go through those vendor negotiations to figure out exactly yeah. what they need. So it becomes like a full, That's full great. circle in terms of we're having them do things that are in the industry. Yeah. We're not just doing things to do things. No, that's amazing. That's and amazing. The equipment access allows the students to learn on their own at their own pace. Because that's, you know, people they always... take it home. Yeah, because they, they, sometimes they see that as a barrier to entry. Well, I don't have the camera. I don't have that. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, nowadays you have a cell phone, so you can shoot anything you want and mm -hmm. make anything, and it mm -hmm. can look great. Yep. You, you can shoot in 4K. You can get mm -hmm. lenses for your phone for exactly telephoto different. and whatever else you want to do. It's an empowering tool. Mm -hmm. It kind of says, I trust you. Yeah. You can do this. Go out there and use this. And they're like, oh, my gosh, it's a $5,000 camera. Right. Um, and we're like, yeah, and it's yours to use. You have this many days to use it. I yeah. think it's very um, empowering. And in you're my like, opinion. it's insured, but still don't worry. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> oh, don't yes. worry. <laughs> and we trust you, but it's insured. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And after yeah. they finished the actual apprenticeship program, we let them also rent it out at a very, very subsidized low cost oh, that's great. for a year afterwards. So what, sort, what sort of cameras do you have? Uh, we have GH5s. Okay. Um, and they're, you know, they have a nice that's little. That's Panasonic. Yep, Panasonic. Yep. Got, got a nice little. Kit lens on there, yeah. you know. We have a laptop if they need, you know, right. Adobe editing mm -hmm. software and things like that. So mm -hmm. awesome, yeah. awesome. I wanted to say that we also do a summer program, yeah, um, for high school students, yeah, like a summer uh, camp. A summer camp. How long? How long is that? Two weeks. Okay. And uh, this year we are partnering with SMU. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, so uh, we're really excited for that. Um, but I wanted to tell you a little story about a summer program. Okay. Um. A few years ago, uh, when I was volunteering at some of the schools that don't have the type of financial support and programs, um, some of those students were uh, engaging in our um, summer production. Mm -hmm. And also we had some of the students that I had from the high school that I taught at. And um, we had one high school student that drove a... Um, a Topless, what do you call the oh, kind of cars? Convertible. That, convertible. Convertible. Sorry, <laughs> English is, I'm Iranian American. I was going to say a topless car. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. I'm glad All right. I, well, I wasn't sure. Yeah. I, was, I, did, I just assumed you were American, but. <laughs> but I'm Iranian American. Yes. English not the first language. Makes yes. sense. Yeah. I like topless car though. That sounds, <laughs> that sounds super, super. Well, it is a topless car. <laughs> that it's sounds not. super fun. <laughs> it sounds like something that would happen in college. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, a convertible. Thank you. Right. <laughs> convertible Jaguar. Okay. And this lovely student uh, was making a film with another lovely student who is having to work. Two jobs outside of high school. Oh, yeah. Does not have a car and was having to do DART and um, just trying to get to the program. Yeah. Um, by the second week, that student was going and picking up that student. That's great. Um, and they became great friends. And it was lovely to see that. Yeah. Right. You know, it was... It's about connecting sure. human heart to a human heart. Um, not just about connecting like a network, yeah. but like real relationships and caring for each other, you know? Yeah, no, that that's amazing. Mm -hmm. So when is the uh the the Pegasus High School Film Festival? When is that take when is that oh, take place? Yes. Um so our film festival will be at Look Theater. Okay. And uh it's uh, May twenty uh, fourth and twenty fifth this year. Mm -hmm. Um, it's usually on the Labor Day weekend, um, and we have a lot of people come from everywhere because yeah. we take submissions from all over the country. Sure, you use Film Freeway, and you do a call for entries, accepting high yes. school films. And so I, our call for entries open right now still? It is open, yes. You yeah. can go to Pegasus Film Festival, um, Film Freeway. And um, we also have uh, the ability to allow students not to get charged at all. Right. So if someone says, "Hey," they email us and say, "Hey, we, you know, I need to get in," we immediately give him a code. Sure. So it's like most film festivals. There's a fee to submit the film. Yes. But you'll give out waiver codes for 
just ask, basically. Just ask. Yeah. Just ask, yeah. Yeah. And sometimes the teachers ask, and they say, can I give sure. this code? And, and we do that, too. Yeah, because sometimes uh, the school programs do have the funds to pay for submission fees, and so they'll pay for the submission fees. At my film festival in Florida, we have a student film block, and so we'll have certain like high schools in the Tampa area that submit every single year and multiple films every year, and those schools have in their budget you know, for that department or whatever to be able to pay for these mm -hmm. but then other instances where it's maybe not quite built like that where you can get a way because now all, obviously all schools are different across the country right mm -hmm. right um yeah we ha we've had a school that uh submitted every year and uh, the school had the budget it was um alquin uh high school which is a wonderful school yeah um and so you get um, films from across the country i'm, I'm assuming. we do yeah. we do um what makes us the largest student led film festival is that they're truly mm -hmm. running the festival yeah. with adult mentors that's great um and so yeah the american um high school film festival is the largest film festival mm -hmm. in uh united states but um they're not student-led yeah yeah that's, that's what which makes is, us different which is, yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah that's so that's that's really cool though and so when uh, when does the call for entries end uh, I believe uh, May 1st. Oh, wow. So that's a tight turnaround from May 1st to then May 24th, 25th having the festival. Yeah. Oh. It might be a little bit earlier, but we do let um, the late submissions. We we do start reviewing it earlier. Of course. In April. Yeah, you have yeah. to. You have to start reviewing now. Otherwise, <laughs> right. there's no way. Yeah. How many films per year are submitted? Um, each year is different. Yeah. Um, it was weird. The year that was 20. 20 yeah we had a ton of submissions yeah i guess everybody was home and just <laughs> right making little movies <laughs> making little movies um but this year so far we have about a hundred entries oh nice that's awesome yeah that's yeah that's awesome and then over the course of the two days are you doing like all day just evening screenings um it's all day uh -huh. and it's a combination of workshops and yeah. q and a's sure. and also we have um a college um, a unit that uh, colleges come mm -hmm. and 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 set up um, their tables. They sure. give information. Well, might as well recruit the they students recruit. to their programs. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. And also, they um, give away scholarships. Oh, that's uh, great! By reviewing, and they're part of our uh, judging panel. Yeah, festivals are, are are not just a lot of fun, but I always tell people, anybody that calls and says, "Hey, I'm looking to." meet people in the industry and get started mm -hmm. in the industry, the first thing I say is go to film festivals. You know, and people say, well, when I have a film, I was like, no, don't wait till you have mm -hmm. a film. Go to a film festival because that's where you're going to meet everybody in the industry and people mm -hmm. are working together. And people you meet at a festival, you end up then getting together and shooting a short film that then you want to submit to that festival you met at the next year. Mm -hmm. And it just happens, and I've seen it happen year after year after year, mm -hmm. um, you know, and not just my festival. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, film festivals around the around the world. It's just mm -hmm. the, the the best thing. And Dallas has so many film festivals. It is I've, it's crazy Bonkers. how many film festivals are here. I'm like, how, how is it possible to have this many film festivals? We have like in at one least city? what six, seven, eight? Maybe? I think it's more than that. No, yeah, it's, it's a lot it's, more than yeah. that. I think it's like a dozen or more. <laughs> it's film crazy. Festivals. Like I'll hear about it. Like this film festival is like I, don't, I didn't. Even, I've been here a year, and that's the first I've heard of that one. You know? <laughs> right. They're all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But I wanted to, again, say that the uh, SMU um, summer camp that we're having uh, is going to be um, in June. It is, I think it starts on June 7th mm -hmm. and then ends 21st. Uh, it's two weeks. The first week is fundamentals yeah. and uh, just project-based and uh, hands-on learning. And then the second week, um, we're actually going to all make a film together. That's the awesome. students will pitch um, and then we'll choose one, and we all make it together. So it's really exciting. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. I've I've done um, summer camp. I keep referring back to the Sunscreen Film Festival because I have the experience doing that, and we've done a summer camp probably for twelve or fifteen years for that one as well. Mm -hmm. And so it's re it is rewarding to see what the students turn out and and what they what they do with all that. Well, before we wrap up, is there anything else you'd like to discuss or tell the audience before uh, before we're done here? Uh, go to PegasusFilmFestival.com yeah. and uh, find out what we do and click on donate. <laughs> Great. And then for the Pegasus Media Project, for any of the apprenticeship programs, when can people 
apply or start applying for that? Because you, you take applications once a year and then you have the program. And so like, what's that application period? So I believe it's open summer. June or July 15th. It's one of those two dates. Okay. And then it'll, it's in the summer. And then we'll have selections, I think by the middle of August for a start in September. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And then the last, you know, all the way <laughs> through the next year. So yeah. how, how long is the apprenticeship? How long does that last? We're working on that. It kind of depends on budgeting. Sure. Um, how many students and everything. This right. particular cohort started in October and their pre-apprenticeship ends at the end of June. Awesome. So that's about that's nine, a nice, nine that's months. A, that's a long program then. That, mm -hmm. that's good. It's a year long program. <clears throat> yeah, that's great. They'll have contact with us until June, but mm -hmm. after that we continue to support them yeah. and find, um, you know, work for them. And also one of the elements that we do is have them um, create their own right. um, businesses. Because if you're not going to work in these industries, sure. you still have to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, make gigs. So you can yeah. always do all types of videos here in Dallas. We need more wedding videos. <laughs> hey, people aren't stopping getting married anytime soon. So. No, they're and not. then they just get divorced and get married again. So it's like repeat, recurring repeat business. business. It's so easy, you know. And now that and now that gay marriage is legal, like the, the sky's the limit. Like you can Absolutely. just absolutely, you know, everybody get married and divorce. It's great. Yes, it's great for, it's great for the industry. It's great for the business. <laughs> I don't know about the moral fabric of America. Yeah. We're not worried about that. Yeah, I want so, the city of Dallas to hear us. Economic yeah. uh, development. And we're here. We're not going anywhere. And we we want to you guys to utilize what we're doing and expand it because yeah. it's good for everybody. It really is. I, and I do think it's necessary. And so Pegasus uh, Film Festival dot com, mm -hmm. Pegasus Media Project dot com dot com. And then Instagram is uh, I think Pegasus Media Project Pegasus and Media Pegasus Project Film Festival and Pegasus Film yeah. Festival. And we have those separate. We've been advised so much to yeah. combine everything. But the point is that the students that do the Pegasus Film Festival, every year the art department starts a whole new yeah. of what their theme and color palette and fonts and everything. And they run that yeah. uh, Well, and it is website. two separate things. One's it an is. apprenticeship program. One is high school students yes. doing a film festival. I understand, you know, yes, name it's, it's the same thing, yes. but it really is two separate things. So it makes yeah. sense. Yeah. It makes sense to me why it's two separate things. Yeah. But you just have to run two separate social accounts now. So, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. The students are running the other one, so we're oh, good. We're, we're, we're good. Very good. Very good. Yeah. There you go. Well, thank you so much for uh, for thank coming for on us. the Dallas Film Podcast. It was great talking with you and looking thank forward you. to doing more with you soon. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Thank you.